Oh, great, I got thermal pants, or oh, I've got thermal paste on my pants. Hey, what's up everyone, Danny here. I recently made a video reviewing this laptop, the Electronics W650 KK1. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll have it linked above in the title card as well as in the description section below so you can check that out. This supports full desktop CPUs. Yeah, you, you heard right. This uses the same CPUs that desktops do, which means that you can take them out uh, or change it whenever you want to. I didn't really show it too much in the video though. I kind of just showed the cover and the retention arm, but I didn't think to take the CPU out since at the time I didn't have anything worth putting in there. I do now though, and a lot of people have been asking, you know, if it's easy or not and asked if I could do a tutorial showing it because not a lot of people have seen laptops that can support desktop CPUs. So I figured I'd do that now as well as discuss it a bit because this isn't too common of a topic and you probably don't hear about this too often. I have this i5 CC600 right here that I was able to get for pretty cheap. So let's stick it in. That's what she said. So the rest of the video is gonna be from this angle because I wanna show you what's going on and everything. I have the laptop and I have my screwdriver set as well as some thermal paste and then uh, the CPU itself. So let's get right into it. So before I found this laptop, uh, I already knew that some laptops were able to use desktop CPUs. It's by no means a new thing. Uh, I think they've been around for a while, but you just don't hear about them too often. And it's kind of hard to find any information on them. From what I can find, Clevo, the company that makes this laptop, uh, the one that sells to electronics, uh, they are one of the only companies that really does this. And they sell to other companies too, like Origin and Sager, or Sager, however you want to say that. Uh, you might have heard of those. They're a little bit bigger than electronics. But for the most part, Clevo is an ODM. So they make these bare bone laptop kits and they sell it to the companies so that they can kind of outfit them however they want. And uh, a handful of their models actually have desktop CPUs in them. When I try to look on the internet regarding this topic, the earliest posts that I could find was around 2007 or 2008. That's when apparently some of the first laptops came out that supported desktop CPUs. If you actually know of a laptop that's older than like the 2007, 2008, era uh, that does support desktop CPUs, let me know down in the comment section below. This isn't by any means new, it's just not very popular. Let me zoom in a little bit so it's easier to see now that we have the cover off. So it looks like a desktop CPU. Uh, in terms of the retention arm and the cover anyways, it just has a different heatsink on it right here. One of the reasons I think this isn't more popular is because it makes the laptop thicker. This laptop is by no means huge though. Let me zoom out again. Uh, I should have planned this better, but if you look at it, I mean, it's not the thinnest laptop out there, but it's also not huge. I'd say it's maybe a little bit thicker than average just because by today's standards, everything is getting slimmer and slimmer. But yeah, it does stick out of the motherboard a little bit more. So I can think of that being one of the reasons that it's not too common or popular, especially with the big companies. So the first thing I need to do is remove four screws. Come on. There you go. So that was pretty easy. Just four screws. And pop this open. And there you have it. The G4560 covered in thermal paste. Let me clean this off real quick. And there it is. Let me clean up this as well. So here's the i5-6600. So aside from the whole thickness of the hardware thing and making the laptop thicker, there is also the power draw aspect of it. And I guess for mobility, some people want extra battery life or extended use away from like an outlet. And for me, it's not gonna be a huge deal because when I look for a laptop and I look for it to be like mobile, I use that word in sense as I can take this machine out of the house easier, but wherever I go, I don't mind having to plug in if I'm gonna be using the computer for like a long period of time. Uh, other people may want more from their laptop though, you know, they, they want it to be usable without having to plug in for like, let's say, I don't know, uh, six to eight hours on use. When I made the other video, I mentioned that this is a great laptop for students. And that's because 
you can usually plug in when you're like in your dorm room or if you're out and about, like let's say you're studying or doing homework, let's say you're at the library or a coffee shop or something, then you'll be more than fine. You know, if you're looking for a cheap laptop that can game uh, and that you can switch the processor out, uh, you might not be looking for like the best battery life as long as you're able to plug in. So it kind of, you know, it depends on what you're looking for. Uh, and a lot of people were actually bringing that up saying it's a really bad thing, but you know, there is a market for this, uh, me being one of them, and I'm sure other viewers as well. All right, so we have it in there now. You can see it close up. I mean, it looks exactly as if you were gonna do it in the desktop. So now I just gotta put the heatsink back on and we will be good to go. That was really easy. It was basically like doing a, a desktop computer. I think the really cool thing about this though is you, you get the freedom to upgrade over time. Uh, not just that the process is easier, but because it uses a desktop processor, you know, those are easier to find used and those are easier to sell off your old one that you're upgrading from uh, in the used market. You know, as you find your needs increase or you get more money, because not everyone has all their money at once, you can start with this laptop in the base form at a cheap price and then you can easily upgrade and then like this, like this G4560, this is a really popular processor. You wouldn't have a hard time selling this at all. Uh, like, I think I can probably get MSRP for this, which is $65. And uh, that's because these are kind of low in stock everywhere. The only place I think that kind of has them is Micro Center, but not everyone has Micro Center. So let's assume I can sell this for 65 bucks, which I think I can, uh, or I can make use of it, which makes it kind of equivalent to 65 bucks. So I don't have to buy another one. But this uh, i5-6600, this cost me on eBay uh, $145. So think of this as like an $80 upgrade, which I think is uh, relatively inexpensive for, you know, going from two core uh, four threads to a full four cores. So it's basically time to benchmark now and make sure everything uh, is in check and that the temperatures are good to go. The laptop is turned on now and we can see that the processor is detected, i5-6600. So I'm running around in Novigrad now with the same settings that I had when I had the G4560 and for the most part the average FPS does seem like it went up a bit. Um, you can see there it was 47 uh, with the G4560 and now it's mid 50s so that's a decent gain um, and if you look at the temperature of the CPU uh, those are a little bit warmer again because this is a higher TDP chip and it's the same cooling. So uh, we're reaching about 70 though, not much higher than that. And it's still fully being utilized, but if you can see here, the GPU is also still being fully stressed. I like using Novigrad to do this because there's a lot of different uh, characters walking in the background and a lot of structures and stuff. So it puts a lot of load on the CPU and the GPU, but um, it looks like it does make an improvement by having that in the system, as well as just having that i5 in there uh, for other tasks, it's going to be a lot better because it has the full four cores instead of just four threads. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you did enjoy the video or found it helpful at all, please be sure to leave a thumbs up. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, let me know down in the comment section below like what your thoughts are in general on laptops that support desktop CPUs. Do you want to see more laptops from like the bigger well-known brands uh, offering this? Or do you just not care at all? But uh, yeah, thank you as always for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I look forward to reading all your comments and responses uh, down below in the comment section as well as in the next video. Bye.